So next up, we're going to have a poet. We're going to try and trade off here, artists and poets. Um, and next is Kathleen Flanagan. Kathleen grew up in the Richland in the 1960s and 70s. She returned to work at Hanford as an environmental engineer and hydrogeologist in the mid-1980s before moving to Seattle. Her new book of poems, Plume, a very personal and conflicted history of the Hanford site, will be released in February by the University of Washington Press. Kathleen will also be doing a more in-depth reading from this book on March 29th at another event sponsored by WPSR. Kathleen? Thank you, Nick. I wanted to say a thank you to all the organizers of the event, but especially Nancy, who invited me to be part of this project in 2010. So I'm really proud to have poems included in this program. Can you hear me okay? Okay. A little bit louder? <laughs> I'll lift this up. I'm going to read a couple of poems. Um, as, as Nick mentioned, I, I grew up in Richland. Um, I actually came back and worked as an engineer in the hydrogeology unit, um, did environmental waste monitoring when I was there, and left um, to be in Seattle, which is a landscape, I have to admit, that really appeals to me more than, than the Richland landscape, which is beautiful in its way. And I have come to appreciate it in a kind of thoughtful way, but it doesn't speak to my heart the way the trees do, I have to admit. Um, but when I left, I didn't leave it entirely. My, my family was still there. And about 10 years after I, I left Hanford, my best friend called me to tell me her dad was dying of a radiation illness. And this is a guy who I grew up with, um, who I knew like an uncle. So that caused me to sort of revisit everything that I knew, and I started doing more research. It took me about 20 years before I actually started writing these poems, but uh, I needed that time to think through what I, what I had lived and what I knew now. So that, that's where these poems come from. So I'm just going to read a couple of those tonight. And this first one is called Bedroom Community, and that's something that we called I've always heard Richland, when I was growing up there, referred to as a bedroom community, and I never quite understood what that meant, so I sort of have put my own spin on it. We were all bedded down in our nightcaps, curtains drawn as swamp coolers and sprinklers hissed every brown summer hour, or in winter, sagebrush hardened in the cold. It was still dark as our fathers rose, dressed, and boarded blue buses that pulled away, and men in milk trucks came collecting bottled urine from our doorsteps. Beyond the shelter belt of Russian olive trees, cargo trains shuffled past at eight and eight, and the wide Columbia rolled by, silent with walleye and steelhead. We pulled up our covers while our overburdened fathers dragged home to fix a drink and some of them grew sick. Carolyn, your father's marrow testified. Whistles from the train, the buses came, our fathers left, oh Carolyn, while the rest of us slept. And, oh, thanks. And then I have, I have two poems that are, have a title, Richland Doc. One is 1956 and one is 2006, and, and those are included in the exhibit. I'm going to read 1956. One of the things, when I was reading Michelle Gerber's book, On the Home Front, which I think is a fantastic book and everyone should read it, it's a narrative of the waste history at Hanford. Um, one of the things I thought about was how disconnected the workers had to be in order to do some of the research they did and then go home and just be a neighbor. And just trying to wrap my mind around that is one of the things I've, I've been thinking through. Richland Dock, 1956. Someone launched a boat into the current, caught and delivered fish to the lab, and someone tested for beta and P32. Someone with flasks and test tubes tested and retested to double check the rising values. And someone drove to the public dock with a clipboard and tallied species and weight, chatting with his neighbors, 
Which fish are you keeping? How many did you eat? And someone with a slide rule in a pool of light figured and refigured the radionuclide dose. Too high. Experimented frying up hot white fish. No, no. Then someone decided all the numbers were wrong. Someone from our town. Is that why we were never told? While someone fishing, that little boy, the teacher on Cedar Street, caught his limit and never knew. Thank you.